Hello, my name is Reed Piernock. My pronouns are they, them. I'm a senior web front-end developer at Georgetown University. Today, we are going to talk about KSS Node, pattern libraries, style guides, and WordPress. We are going to go over installing and setting up KSS Node using Twig and CSS comments and getting WordPress to use the new patterns. So while my team and this presentation will be using SAS, KSS Node is very adaptable to plain CSS or any other CSS processor or framework that you or your team is using. We will not be going over the differences between any CSS or SAS or other framework. We will not be going over any kind of naming convention, smacks, BEM, anything like that. Uh, some are better than others. People are very opinionated. No one method is preferred over another when using KSS node. We won't be going over creating custom Gutenberg blocks or setting up WordPress themes. We are going to quickly and briefly have an overview of how to include twig patterns from the pattern library into custom blocks and custom themes, but we're not going to have the intricate details of setting those up. So hopefully you are here with at least a vague understanding of developing custom blocks or custom themes. The first thing that we need before setting up our KSS node project is a place to put it. So once you have your directory or your repo for your pattern library, you need at least four directories in there. You need one for the builder itself for the pattern library and the style guide. You need a directory that will hold the documentation of the style guide itself. And for the pattern library, you need at least your source directory for your working files and your distributed or your build directory. These aren't set in stone. You need at least these directories, but they can be named anything according to your team's coding conventions. So in your project directory, you set up your package JSON. Uh, this is a very simple version of it here. So for this project, all we're including, uh, requiring is SAS and KSS. And right now, even before we do anything else, we'll just add our scripts uh, to build those things, even though they don't do anything yet. Uh, you'll notice here, we have it set up to do the KSS config for the build, uh, we will later go over that KSS config file. That is what will do the build for not just your pattern library, but also the generated style guide documentation. So in your node models folder for KSS, it includes several builder directories. Um, handlebars might be the one that a lot of people are using. Um, there are a few others in there. Because we're in WordPress um, and we're going to set up Timber in WordPress for our templating, um, we're going to copy that twig builder from the KSS folder into our builder folder. So going into the KSS config file, 
Um, like I mentioned, you have your source, your destination, your builder, and then your CSS. The source is the working files that you have. Um, your CSS and your twig files will be stored in that directory. The destination is um, the generated style guide documentation. Uh, the builder is the location of where your builder files are. All of those, the source, the destination, and the builder are relative to the KSS config file. The only one that's different is the CSS path, and that is the generated, um, the generated pattern library CSS. Uh, so here it, it is relative to the style guide files, and that's relative to that style guide directory. So we'll start by creating some of our basic pattern library directories. Uh, here I have them separated out into SAS partials that we'll be using. And then in our styles, uh, our main styles, SAS, I'm including those partials that were created. And then going back to the KSS config file, uh, we can set up namespaces. Because we'll be referencing the twig files from our pattern library in WordPress in both the custom blocks and the custom themes, it will be a lot easier to have these namespaces available uh, so we can reference them by their namespace. And now we're ready to add our first patterns. We'll start with colors. Many organizations and universities have brand colors. And color documentation is a little different from the other pattern documentation. First here in the CSS or SAS, we have front matter comments. And this is what helps build that style guide documentation. The first is the name of the pattern. Here it is brand colors. For colors specifically, we tell it that this is a colors CSS. And then we list those colors out. Each line has the name of the color, the code for the color, and then a description for the color. After that, we have the weight for the page. KSS node will default to alphabetical when sorting the pages in the navigation hierarchy. And if you'd like to give a different organization structure to the outline, you can give each SAS partial or each section uh, of your CSS a weight. And then after that, um, we tell it where in the style guide we want to put this. And this will help in creating hierarchy and page URLs. After our comments, then we add our SAS or CSS as usual. And once we run our KSS build commands, we have our first patterns in our style guide. Uh, generates our colors uh, according to our brand, shows the names, the codes, and the descriptions. And we're ready to add additional patterns. We have our text, and here we have a main text section and underneath that heading and paragraph. Again, the name of the pattern, the description, 
Now this one is a little different than colors because we're actually writing our own custom twig and we want to tell it where the markup for that is. We can specify a weight again. And for the style guide, these are nested under text. So if we give text a top level, we can then put text heading and text paragraph. We can create the heading twig um, and give it variables to use when we call that twig. Uh, here we are saying that heading level and heading text are variables that we can use. And then we have our example file where we are including that heading twig and passing in values that we want to illustrate. Once we compile our style guide documentation again, we have a page that shows our heading patterns. It displays the pattern name and the description and then the examples there that we've included and then the markup for that example. Again with the paragraph. And a generated style guide documentation page for paragraph. Another type of pattern, um, this is mostly found in links, but can happen with any time you have mm, variants on beyond the default. We have the name of the pattern and the description. The difference here is the modifier or the variant on your pattern. A lot of times this is a class or a pseudo class that will be in addition to your default. Again, we have the location of the markup file and the weight and its location in the style guide. Similarly to the heading in the paragraph, we have our twig file with the code to create that link and an example with the values passed in to those variables. Now on the generated style guide page for this, we have the name of the pattern, link, and a description. But in addition to the default styling, we also have example illustrated for the modifiers. Uh, we specified that hover and focus visible were modifiers for link. So when this is generated in the style guide documentation, we can also have examples for those modifiers without having to create those examples by hand over and over. And this can be very convenient when you have a lot of variants for a pattern. So now we have a heading and we have a paragraph and we have a link. So let's put it all together. Uh, we have enough styles and enough patterns. Um, we can create a new card. So in our card SAS partial, again, we have the name of the pattern, all of our front matter specifying what it is, and some CSS giving it some styling. The difference here is that we have included those other twig files into this twig file to create a new pattern. So we're including the heading 
and we're telling it to pass the card heading into the heading text and use that. We're including the paragraph and we're telling it to take the card description and pass it into the paragraph text. And then we're including the link and we're telling it to take the card link text and card link URL and pass it into the link text and link URL. New addition here is using the modifier class variable and specifying that it should be CTA link. Now we don't have that set up yet. Another thing that's different here is in the previous examples, we were creating those example twig files by hand and including the original twig file for the pattern and then passing in the variables. But what you can also do is create a JSON file that's in the same directory at the same level as the twig. So as long as the JSON file has the same file name as the twig file, then it will, the KSS node will know where to look for the example variables and information. So because we have card.twig, as long as we have card.json, it will know where to pull that example information from. And when we generate our style guide documentation again, we have a card. Now this is a little weird because most cards, you might not just want a link, you might want that link to be a little more stylized. And that's why before we passed in that modifier class of CTA link. And we go back to the link CSS and we can put those modifier classes right beneath hover and focus visible. And we say these are different variants of link. Um, we have our regular generic A, that's a link. And now CTA link is a new variant on that and we add that to the modifiers. update the CSS here to add new styles for that class, just as we would any other time that we are adding a new variant or a new class. And the difference here is once we compile our style guide documentation again and go back to our link page, it knows where to find that modifier. We don't have to add another example because we've added it to a modifier and it finds the modifier and generates it into the page again. Another good thing here is because we're using patterns, we can go back to our card and now that link is updated with our new styles. Now we can do even more with that because card by itself is a little lonely and it's just hanging out there. So let's put it in a grid with a bunch more cards. Now what's fun here, let's create the card grid and we'll put it under layout. Um, like we nested some of those other uh, elements. We put the heading in the paragraph under text we're going to put a card grid layout under the layout heading. And like we did with card and the card twig and JSON, we're going to create a card grid JSON file. And for each item in cards, we will include that example information that will be used to build out our example cards for the documentation. In our card grid twig, we have our wrapper. All we really need to do here is add that wrapper of div with a class of card grid. 
inside that, we are just having a loop. We tell it to look for the card item inside cards. And once we go into that loop, we are including the card twig pattern. Just one of them for each card that is in cards. When we generate our style guide documentation again, we see that there is now output one card for each of the card items. It doesn't look like anything yet because all we did was add a wrapper, it, but it did spit everything out and we didn't have to do anything extra there. But we can go back and add those styles in to lay out for the card grid. Put some grid styles in there and make it look a little pretty. All we need to do is that here in the layout SAS partial. And when we compile our SAS again, go back to the card grid page. And now we have our card grid laid out in a row. Now this is all fine and good when we have our pattern library and style guide documentation, but it's all sitting somewhere by itself. How do we get it into WordPress? Well, first we're going to start with just the style sheet by itself. So inside a sample theme, we have a package JSON and we're going to have a style SAS file in a source directory. In the package JSON, we're going to have our script to build out our SAS file. But right here, we're going to take note that even if our style SAS file is in a source directory, it needs to compile style.css to the root of our theme because WordPress needs to see style.css at the root of a theme. It needs to have certain front matter at the root of the theme as well. So wherever our source style sheet is, we can call the SAS style sheet from the pattern library. It looks a little weird here because is I'm calling it relative to where they are on my machine. So when the pattern library is updated, then I go into the theme and I tell it to look for that pattern library SAS that includes everything and just include it here in the theme and compile it here. That will make sure that the style.css at the source of the WordPress theme is now pulling in everything from the pattern library. And when we go to our WordPress page, we can see style.css pulling in everything from the pattern library. Now we have our style sheets, but we also want to include twig patterns in the theme as well. Um, in order to do this, we're going to use timber in our theming. And in order to do that, WordPress needs to be a composer based build. Um, so we're doing that at Georgetown in our WordPress build. Um, and then each of our repos that we're pulling into our WordPress build has its own composer JSON. So the pattern library that we have in this composer JSON, we're specifying that the type of thing that it is, is a WordPress drop-in. Once it knows what it is in the composer JSON for our WordPress build, we can require it to use the pattern library. We also have an MU plugin that is a pattern library loader that my colleague Dash wrote. 
this not only looks for the pattern library, but it takes that con J KSS config JSON that we wrote earlier, finds the namespaces that we defined in it, pulls that into WordPress and says, okay, namespaces, I know what to do with this now. And then we also say that anything that's a type of WordPress drop-in, here's the directory that we're going to store it in. Again, as I mentioned earlier, we are requiring timber for the theme. That will make it a little easier. It helps in writing twig files for uh, WordPress theming. And now we're ready to add the twig patterns to a theme template. We've defined the pattern library as a WordPress drop-in. We've told WordPress where to store the drop-in files. We've required the pattern library and the loader in the WordPress build, and we're requiring Timber for templating in the theme. We're not going over theming itself. As I mentioned earlier, it is beyond the scope of this presentation, but there is very great documentation at the Timber GitHub repo. A very brief overview, just to give you some idea of what you would be getting into. In your index PHP in the theme, um, it's usually a lot of PHP going through the, the loop and finding information that you need. With Timber, it's a little different. You can find the context, you can get the post, and you're passing all of that into your twig file instead of putting it all into PHP. Once you pass that into twig or whichever other template that you are using, everything there is where your uh, front end code is going to be. So there, we didn't go over them here because I would take way too much time. But in the pattern library, there will be other patterns that you have beyond paragraph and heading and card. You can create header, your nav, your footer based on other patterns that you have, putting them all together into bigger pieces. And once you have those pieces that you need, you can start putting them into WordPress. So that index.twig in the theme that we mentioned, instead of using index.php, would look something like this, um, calling in twig files from the pattern library using the namespaces that we defined in the KSS config uh, earlier. Uh, so using at layout header, at layout nav, at layout footer, um, to call those and pass in the things that we need from WordPress itself, we can say that, you know, site name, site URL from WordPress, pass those in and use that in the twig files that we define. So something like the navigation, we created our own navigation uh, under, under layout and we defined it as nav. WordPress defines it in with Timber as main navigation items. So when we call the layout nav.twig, its variable is nav. So we, so we say, okay, we'll use that, but use it with main navigation items as your nav. And once we go to our WordPress site, we have a new looking theme with the header and nav and footer that we had from our pattern library, but now it's in our theme instead. How about adding twig patterns to custom blocks? The pattern library is already defined as a WordPress drop-in and WordPress already knows where to look for the drop-in pattern library, we can now tell 
the custom box plugin how to use the twig patterns. In the Composer JSON for the custom box plugin, we also require timber there. Again, very briefly, we are not going over how to create custom blocks. There's a brief overview. Uh, these blocks will be dynamic because we are using a uh, twig. But here is a, is a very, very simple setup for a card custom block. The edit is separate just for clarity and cleaner code. But because it's a dynamic block, we are returning null for the save because in, in, the, uh, in the register, we're going to use the twig file instead to render the, the front end. So the edit here is also very simple. The main things that we want are the heading description, link text, and link URL that are core to the card pattern that we created earlier. We can add the input fields that we need for the editor to put the content in and create events to set the attributes for that input value. Again, very simple, most basic block, minimal fields, very little styling on the, on the editor page, uh, but we have the information that we need to input content and save it for what we need to send it to the twig patterns. So in the register page P for the block, um, we, we want to register the attributes we need to pass it to the twig pattern. We are going to grab the attributes that we defined from the block when we edit it and save. And then we're going to call the twig pattern we want from the pattern library using that namespace again. So here we can just call at card card.twig. And then we're going to pass the blocks values to the patterns variables. And once we've saved and compiled our plugin for custom blocks, we now have a front end for our card as well. Now we have a custom theme using pieces from the pattern library and we have custom blocks using pieces from the pattern library and new features can be added based on the existing patterns that we have. When we add more patterns on building additional custom blocks here, uh, like a card grid pattern. We can add more patterns to enhance the design of functionality to the theme, like a search bar being added to the navigation. Anytime that these are added to the pattern library, we can go back to our custom blocks or our custom themes, and it is a lot easier to just call it from the pattern library using those namespaces and pass the variables over to them instead of writing those pieces of code over and over again where we need them. We can just create one piece in the pattern library and call it as we need it. Make a change once in the pattern library and have that populate it all throughout where we need it to be. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Reed. I hope that you've learned something and please let me know if you have any questions or feedback. I would love to see what you do with your own pattern libraries.